Um, we're talking today a little bit and uh, trying to help students adjust to their time here, right? So can you explain to me a little bit about the curricular construction of the Masters of International Affairs? What type of courses are in it? Uh, our Masters is essentially a generalized Masters. Uh, it was designed to be for people who may not go on for a PhD, but rather are going to go into a job market analyst position, things like that. So it is designed to be a very general overview of international affairs, international relations. So within the context of the program, there are eight required classes and then three electives. The electives vary depending on who's free to teach and things like that, but the eight uh, core classes are theories of international relations, uh, foreign policy, theories of comparative politics, uh, global governance, international political economy, leadership and organizational theory, um, and capstone, and research methods. So across all of those, you will get a very good idea of both the security side and also the economic side, as well as non-governmental organizations within the international system. And then we don't have a thesis option within the program. Essentially, you will do a large capstone uh, project, which is six credit hours as compared to three credit hours for all of our other classes, which will be in your, usually your last semester or two. So if you're a graduate student in the master's program, about how many classes do you take a term? A lot, that really varies, depending on uh, whether the student is working or not, or whether they're doing school full-time. If you do full-time, it's three classes a semester. Uh, we have, most of our program is actually the students are working, so they're taking one or two. So the fastest you can do the program is two years if you're doing full-time. If you're doing part-time, we've had people take, you know, it's taken them five years because they do one class a semester. So if you do choose to apply for a graduate assistantship, uh, you have to really be a full-time graduate student at that time. So understand that if you would like to have that tuition waiver and you'd like to have that opportunity, you have to be a full-time graduate student, which means you have to have three courses a term. And you also have to be in the area. Yes. Because our program is fully online, you actually never have to step on campus if you're not in the area. So we've had students who we have never physically met graduate from the program. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in this online program, what do you think are some of the biggest hurdles that students first face when they first attempt an online master's program? Well, I can speak, let me say, just because we have a lot of online classes in our undergrad, a lot of the things are the same. The first thing is the students have to be motivated. If you are not engaged, if you are not focused on your own learning, it is not going to end well. Um, and there's, I can only do so much as a faculty member. We can set the dates, uh, but you have to be engaged, you have to be active, you have to be much more attentive to your own learning than you might have to be in a face-to-face -face class where you go in, you take notes, I prep for a test, and that's it. You have to be very engaged in terms of focused on your reading. Um, in a master's level, it is a much more significant level of reading, and you don't get the guidance in some ways be, because you're not in class. You know, um, what I may be able to answer, you know, if you had a question in two minutes talking to you, it may take me 15 to 20 minutes to type out a response in an online. So it's a little bit different dynamic, and it's not the immediate uh, response that you would get with an online face or face to face class. Okay. Yeah. So. Here at the Political Science and International Affairs Department, we not only have an online Master's in International Affairs, we also have a fully online Master's of Public Administration. Um, these courses actually offer classes all year long. They have rolling admission, so you can be a student that starts in the fall, but you can also start in the spring or start in the summer. So um, can you talk to me a little bit about the summer courses in comparison to the fall and spring courses and, and how many classes a student also takes in the summer if they choose to be in one of those classes? For summer, it depends. If you're doing financial aid, if you're getting financial aid, you must take two courses because you have to be in at least six hours. Uh, and truthfully, that is going to be very difficult in the summer because they are compressed semesters. Uh, so we're talking eight weeks, essentially, as compared to 15 for a normal semester. Um, to give you the example or comparison, we're teaching theories of international relations this summer. 
which is normally taught also in the fall semester. Because it's an equivalent class, we have to, they, students have to do the exact same reading in essentially half time. So it is a much more intense class during the summer, which is why a lot of our students will only take one class during the summer. Um, because it is, you have to focus a lot more on it. You have to do a lot more time. If you have to do two classes, essentially working full time is not going to be a viable option. Yeah, I think as a graduate program, time management becomes a really important issue, particularly because of the academic rigor of graduate programs. And the step from undergraduate to graduate programs, um, we've been very blessed in that we've been able to have a very rigorous experience at the undergraduate level for our students. And so because of that, though, they still sense a step up we'll say when we get to the graduate level. Um, so I wanted to also talk to you a little bit about, uh, because in your role as associate department head, you're able to teach on the Gainesville campus as well as the Dahlonega campus. Can you talk to um, students or possible students out there a little bit about the programs you offer on the Gainesville campus as well as some co-curricular activities that the department might have? On the Gainesville campus, well, in, at the University of North Georgia, you can declare for any major in our department across any campus. However, you can't get the degree in on every campus. So on currently on the Gainesville campus, you can get the straight political science bachelor's uh, degree, um, a BS in political science. Uh, we have a fair number of students that want pre-law or international affairs, so they will start there and eventually they'll have to transfer to Dahlonega just because that's where uh, we have some of the expertise and enough of the classes for them to graduate. Um, and right now we have, we've got a growing faculty over at Gainesville. We're gonna add two faculty members within the next year or two, uh, which will expand our offerings. Um, in terms of co-curricular, uh, basically the biggest group over there is the politically incorrect group, which is club which is led by Dr. Douglas Young. Uh, it has been the top club on Gainesville I think for 10 years running or something to that extent. Um, Dr. Young is an incredibly vibrant advisor and he's incredibly focused on students getting engaged especially in debating every topic uh, under the sun in the politically incorrect way. Yeah part of the goal of the political science and international affairs department is to make sure the students are educated uh, so that they become really educated, involved citizens, both at the local level, uh, as well as the national level, as well as internationally. So if you join us on any of our campuses, uh, we will have events uh, in general. So for example, if you choose to start your career at the University of North Georgia on the Cumming campus, we have a sponsored by the Political Science Student Association Crossfire Debate from the Cumming campus. And I hope that you'll be able to follow us on Facebook because you'll be able to see clips of those debates and why students on the coming campus are so engaged and really interested in those types of activities. We also have the Political Science Student Association here in Dahlonega. They have crossfire debates and as well they put out a voter's guide to help our students across all majors become as informed as possible, really regarding the role of a good citizen uh, and to not be afraid of getting involved so we have all of those programs across all of our campuses. We also teach on the Blue Ridge campus as well as the Oconee campus. You can take political science courses at all five uh, of the University of North Georgia's campuses. So I want to thank you, Dr. Greathouse, for coming today and thank you for talking a little bit about the MAIA degree. So in closing, what I want everyone to understand is that the Political Science and International Affairs Department is here to help you.